Okay, Ponziani Arena Tournaments. Every game will be Ponziani. But not every game will be white. Oh, I'm playing FM. Okay. Oh, oops. <laughs> Didn't mean to pre-move that. Okay, so we're going to... Um, oh, this is actually one of the most like sharp, challenging lines. Um, black sacks a piece and then takes on F2. It's interesting that we're starting with this. Um, we'll see how prepared my opponent is. But bishop e6 is a main move, and then queen d5. Yeah, this gets really, really sharp. And I th think I'm supposed to take on b7. I'm going to lose a rook after takes, takes, takes. Oh, castling. My opponent might be, like, really prepared here. <laughs> um, yeah, this is not your typical Ponziani, like, beginner-friendly just control the center it's just uh position explodes before move 10 so i'm considering rook g1 actually here but also bishop e3 perhaps the problem with bishop e3 is takes and then rook b8 and b2 can fall yeah i'm leaning towards rook g1 looks kind of scary but um, i do save the rook I'm temporarily up a piece. My king is on e2, and most of my pieces are not developed. So at least it'll be interesting. Yeah, this is kind of like a Ponziani mixed with a Bong Cloud. Okay, now I cut off the bishop from defending the knight. The queen is always having a square if it gets attacked. Yeah, I'm not sure if e4 was uh, was the best move there, because this pawn, um, I think it's going to be fixed here for a bit, unless black plays this. Oh, okay, that's that's some idea. Forgot that square was accessible. Oh, my bishop's hit. I'll play king d1 maybe. There's also no queen e4 would be bad. Okay, so <laughs> retreating the king, um, but unleashing the bishop, defending this bishop. Oh, some people, oh, a lot of people already won their first game. Good job, people. Yeah, this is going to be a shorter arena tournament than normal. Um, not sure if I'll be able to win it but the the goal is to have instructive games and uh especially provide some value to the, the ponziani fans out there okay now if i take i get forked so probably have to move this way it's also queen d5 mm. actually i kind of like queen d5 just more centralized that way, if takes, I can take back with queen. C6 is normal. And queen f5 now. Maybe queen here. A bit conflicted. Or even queen here. Offering a queen trade. Problem is black can simplify a lot. B2 falls in the end. I think I'll play queen h5. That way the queen's a bit more out of danger. Um, I still really just want to remove the knight. Black might go for the, the line takes, takes, takes. And then maybe I play king c2. I'm probably objectively worse here. My opponent's opening preparation was good. But it can still get messy, especially with time ticking down. One player in clear first. It's two wins before my first game is even finished.
logical. Okay, so now it's very tempting just to take and then probably focus on development. Mm. It's also bishop, no, not bishop g5. Okay, let's take. Wow, that move I didn't see. I have rook f1. Looks logical. Hitting the queen. So both bishops are hanging. Oh, I should have considered just taking threatening mate, but then there was g6. A very confusing position. Okay, now I have bishop here, bishop e5. Uh, what is going on? I could also, if I want to be really brave, should I display my bravery? Allowing a discovery? I feel so brave playing this move, but my, my key pieces are on light squares. So the bishop can't touch him. That's a move. Bishop f4 doesn't work. I guess queen f3. <laughs> What's material? That's scary. Okay, I have this move. So everything's defended. Take with maybe king. Oh, so I have I have two miners for rook and pawn. Wait, no, I'm up two pieces. I have both rooks. Oh, because black didn't take my rook previously. I'm just completely winning. <laughs> yeah, Lee Chess even tells me. Oh, maybe, yeah, maybe black went wrong at some point. I wasn't really paying attention to material. Uh, don't hurt me. Yeah, I'll just play it safe and... I mean, eventually I want to win on the king side. Mm. Play this move first. It looks kind of scary, but if takes, I have takes. The time is maybe the, the bigger issue here. But thankfully, there's increment. I'm kind of botching this. Okay, nice move. This simplifies. So after it takes, takes, I defend the rook. Now I'll activate this rook. Try and win the pawn. Man, what a game to start the tournament. And it don't get skewered there. This move, and then this move. Then this move, probably. Oh, there's a cool mating idea. Oh, wait. Takes? Maybe there's not. I have this move. Check. Where's my mate? I have to play this. Man, this game's taking <laughs> taking very long. It's winning though. Yeah, I give up the bishop and I'll, I'll save the knight. And then we'll go in for the, the kill. Oh no. Did I mess this up? Oh no. I messed this up. No! What is this game? I'm losing now. Actually, it's still interesting. Kind of. More interesting for black, though.
Shining Maiden 1. <laughs> this might be a draw, actually. There's a funny perpetual queen here, and then we draw. What's going on here? Oh, that's a good move. Or is it? No, it's not. Yes, let's go. I'm winning. Let's go. <laughs> wow, what a game. I, I got the fork. Wow. So that game, that game lasted a long time. How do you know that? not the best technique from either of us um man that was crazy <laughs> that, that was already more than one fourth of the tournament i'm currently top okay i'm in the top 40 leader has won three games so far man i have to go back and analyze that game at some point if you want to join, we have the join command, uh, which should link you to the tournament. Okay, this time I'm black. Oh, it's my move. Let's play d5. This is kind of the, the principled move. But, um, yeah, I think d5, d5 and the knight of six are probably the two most common moves. But the point is, after takes, takes, there's no knight c3. So queen a4 is playable. Um... I kind of want to play a gambit here. I have a vague memory of Svidler playing knight f6 against Hikaru. But I'll admit I haven't looked at this in recent times. I think the idea is bishop d6. Or is it take? Is it takes? I think it's bishop d6. I'm kind of improvising here. Um... But yeah, queen a4 is like the tricky Ponziani type move. I've played it many times before on stream, have some games on YouTube. Um, like the, the main line is f6. But uh, yeah, there's a few ways for black to kind of play in the gambit style. So opponents taking their time. And basically, I'm gambling, gambling two pawns, like if white were to take uh, d3. We might even be following this Fiddler Nakamura game. I still have some vague memory of the structure. Um, now I'm probably threatening to take, and bishop b2 is a good move, though. So perhaps rook e8? And now I can consider taking. Oh, I can take and oh, it's tricky though. So I'm calculating takes, 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 and then takes, takes, check. The problem is if after king g1, queen h4, there's um, queen c8. But maybe that's still playable. Like just rook b8, d4, respectable. How about bishop g4 here? Oh, there's a there's a funny line, takes and then, oh maybe it doesn't work though. I was thinking I Greek gift, but there's bishop f4 in the end, defending h2. So I guess I'll take this way, and then queen h4. trying to find my, my threat here. I might just rook lift or I might go for bishop h2 and try and win f2. But I'm kind of getting what I'm um, getting what I was hoping for from this opening. Like speedy development. I'm not even down a pawn. And uh, yeah, white's a bit un underdeveloped on the queen side.
Let's move also something to consider. Oh no, my knight. I forgot to say that earlier. <laughs> A knight is pinned to the, the mating square. Ooh. Oh no, my pawn. So the move I really want to play is this. Um, let's calculate this, this. Takes, 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 takes. If e3? Hmm. I'll play rook b8. I just want to play this and not blunder my rook. Happy four months, Eric. Hey, happy four content. months. Thank you, Rolosus. And now, yeah, now I'm threatening Bishop H2, winning the queen. On top of that, my rook swings in, and we're having lots more fun. Um, but am I mating? Oh, there's a funny move, knight h2. So hitting the rook, unleashing my rook, pinning the pawn, threatening queen h3, also threatening knight f3, perhaps. And there, there's just too much pressure here. Sometimes easy to, to miss this move. Okay, so now I guess I'll take and enjoy life. Bishop e3, I'll, I'll start lunging the f pawn forward. Yeah, now the bishop's trapped. Attack is raging on. It was a fun game. Yeah, I guess no matter which color I am, I'll try and play... Oh, let's not blunder a rook. <laughs> that was very sneaky. Uh, can I save it? Let's just play rook f8. Bishop's still trapped. If knight e4, I take and hit stuff. Oh. Opponent's being resourceful. Queen takes would have pinned my pawn. Love from Sudan. Hey, I love you too. Chess Attic. Welcome. Yeah, I'm not sure how many Sudanese viewers I have. Um, could probably check on YouTube. It's got to be at least a few. Okay, um, how to do this? I just want to threaten mate. The knight's annoying. Let's get rid of it. I should make loot for my king. At some point. Because I want to do... I want to take on e3. And then sack and mate. Hard to defend e3. If I were white, I would play queen d8, hoping to, um, to win the queen. Um, okay, let's play this. There might be some nice queen sack made eventually. Or some nice flag win. Okay. Okay. So two out of two, but games are taking longer uh, than I would like. But okay, still having some, some interesting fights. Okay, so we're going to play the same line. It would be funny if my opponent played what I just played. F6, okay, main move. Yeah, this is one of the better lines for black, but you still kind of have to know what you're doing because the development is a little bit awkward. Bishop E6. Oh, this is bringing back memories. Um, 
One of my first times playing in an over the board tournament, I played against Gari, and he also played Bishop e6. Which I don't think is is a great move. It's playable. But the bishop sometimes ends up being a target. Like I'm wondering if I can play c4 and d5. Probably start with c4. Just hitting the queen. Like more often the bishop is better on d7 just to neutralize uh, the pin. Hola, Arthur HNN. Yeah, welcome everyone. If you're just joining the stream, I am running a, a Ponziani viewer tournament. Uh, something a bit different than usual. Okay, so now I have two threats to take the pawn and to play d5. Not easy to defend. Black's going to have to lose some material here. Oh, the queen and rook attack my bishop. Very tricky. So maybe knight c3. Hitting the rook, defending the bishop, hitting the pawn. Not scared of rook g5. Um, and I'd probably take with this knight and keep developing. Okay, so this knight really defends everything. And I'm up a piece... And a lot of great potential to attack the Black Queen, just given the opposite side casting situation. Kind of want to play this move. Let's play this move, hit the Queen. I feel like my next several moves will be um, just direct attacks or initiative. Now I develop the Bishop with Tempo. Might end up taking and going for knight b5. Mm. I think still knight b5. So I'm threatening the pawn. Oh, I could have taken the pawn directly. But this is maybe trickier because I'm threatening to fork. And then this pawn's also a target. That's a move, though. Play this move. Threatening mate. So, yeah, three attackers, only one sad defender. If rook c6, I fork. Mm. Play b4. Want to play b5. The knight's pinned to the, the c7 pawn. And yeah, this opens a file. Can take this, threatening mate. Yeah, bishop block the queen from defending. I probably just have time for a few more games after this one. Um, just keep the pressure, threatening to take. Man, strong chess mood is so strong. <laughs> 22 points. Okay, there goes all Black's pieces. Okay. Pleasant game. Had one of those like main line kind of sharp opening positions. Um, got the early tactics. Oh, goodbye to Sockvis. Yeah, thanks for stopping by. I know it's probably work hours in Europe right now. So a lot of people still... Uh, yeah, a lot of people above me. Yeah, first place has played like the most amount of games. Okay. What's up, handsome? Oh. Uh, not too much. Oh, it's my move. Let's play f5. Aggressive move. It's it's so it's um it's easy to forget black moves first in this sort of thematic tournament. 
also got distracted from the, the kind compliment. Play queen f6. So f5, it's kind of a an offbeat gambit, but still very playable. I think I just win a pawn here. Interesting. Develop with check. I sh maybe should have considered queen c5, but there's queen d4. Let's slide, slide over. Okay, pleasant position. I want to play d5 soon. It's actually very pleasant. Even though my king's still in the center, I'm going to build up a, a very strong center. Just with the pawns, white's still a bit underdeveloped. Very pleasant pawn chain. I also gave room for my bishop to retreat if necessary. How to do this? Oh, there will be more. Don't worry. I might, uh, yeah, at some point I'll probably do like a longer Ponziani view tournament. I made this one shorter just because candidates is starting very soon. Actually, it starts in uh, about 10 minutes. Um, let's develop. But you can still late join. That's a great thing about uh, these arena tournaments. Even if you show up late, you can still play a few games. Kind of like this move. Get the rook involved. Yeah, keeping the pawns together. If queen a4 check, I play king f8. King is reasonably safe. You might see this move. I probably just want to keep advancing of two center pass pawns this is my my fake castling effort and knight has very few squares to move to and d3 will come man this is so much fun let's <laughs> just keep pushing the center pawns um don't want to get too carried away or do I? Let's keep pushing. Oh, okay. Let's get the knight involved. Take with queen. I wanted to play this, but then takes with check. Um, <laughs> hey, it's mother mate. Let's go. Okay. That was a fun finish. Not every day you get two pawns so deep into the pawn's territory. Um, pretty early in the, the middle game, too. Okay. Playing black. Um, let's play knife six. Haven't played this yet. Oh. <laughs> I do. I just... Uh, I sleep at... Not right now. I sleep at different times. Let's take here. I'm gonna play the same line my um my first opponent played against me in this bishop c5 variation. The bishop e3, it's um probably just a little bit worse for white. In this move. But thanks for the ten dollars, Eric's sleep schedule. Yeah, I slept from like two PM to 11 p.m. It's hard to have like consistency, but uh, <laughs> I am getting enough sleep. So I'm awake right now, making the European and Asian viewers happy. Let's, um, yeah, let's go for this. So if G3, 
I take because of the H file pin, the battery pin. If my H file, if the pawn was still on H7, the queen would defend the rook effectively. But um, yeah, now everything is kind of crumbling for white. So I'm up the exchange and a pawn. Oh no. Ah, I miss that. Oh no, I'm losing two. C6 doesn't work. Or does it? I could try C6 just to maybe confuse my opponent. Ah. I'm in trouble. Don't hurt me. I'm worse here if white plays the right move. <laughs> mm. Yeah, white should have taken the rook and then threatened rook h8. But now I take and everything is A-OK. -okay. Queen, queenside castle here too. Defend the pawn. That was a small scare. It's like kind of falling down a flight of stairs, but landing on my feet. I feel like a cat, but cats don't really fall down stairs. They more just like fall out of windows and then come out unscathed. Okay, let's go for the mating idea. Um, yeah, two more moves away from mate. Not forcing by any means, but... Oh, actually, I am threatening... I was threatening mate in two with rook a2. Ah, I'm getting forked. <laughs> okay, not the highest quality game. Oh, thanks for the bits, Nasaki and Joshua. This is a good thing about being up so much material. You can blunder stuff and still be up a sufficient amount. Okay, so now the plan is this, this, and mate. Threatening made in two here. There we go. Okay, I think we'll have time for one more game. Yeah, not going to finish in first. Good job to strong chess mood. Winning games quickly. But it's fun. Um, like I've, I actually like the concept of doing a thematic viewer tournament. I was inspired by the Hikaru Staffer tournament. So I think I, I might do more of these. Because then it, it makes for more kind of specific YouTube content as well. Um, okay, let's play Queen A4. And for future ones, I'll, I'll try and promote them while I have time. This was a bit more spontaneous. Um, okay, so this line, I can take the bishop and then take on e4 and be up a pawn. Apply some pressure. And keep queens on the board. I could have traded a lot of stuff, but uh, focus on development. It's one of the drawbacks with Ponziani is like queenside development's a little bit slower than usual. But um, as long as you can get d4 in, um, here it looks like I can take. Queen takes I would win that. Play this move. Interesting. 
knight c4. There's also this move. What to do? I'll play this move. Looks a little bit risky. I still have this move. I'll play this first, hitting the bishop. Improving the knight. Get the king safe. Still debating whether to throw in the check. I think now it makes sense, because I'll take with knight, threatening this. Which is not easy to stop, because I'm also preventing... Oh, that's a move. Well played for my opponent. Oh no! The back rank! Opponent's considering it. <laughs> That queen here would be a blunder because uh, I would take and then rook f1. Now I... Ch oh, it's not mating though. Queen e4, good defensive move. I was trying to bait my opponent there. Let's play h3. It's kind of backfiring now. Oh, I'm down a pawn. But I do have a slightly safer king. Oh, it's getting a bit messy. It's hard to exploit the black king. This move. Check. Man, how to do this? My argument will be that the pawn count isn't as important as king safety. So black could potentially be up two pawns. Actually, both of our kings are, are a bit unsafe. So this, this could be a crazy finish to the tournament. I might be threatening queen a5. Now it's less powerful. Probably still queen a5 though. A simple way to attack the pawn. I mean, I wanted to play rook a3, but then um, I'd get mated. It's really hard to judge this position. Um, and black does have to defend. There's rook b7 or rook e7. Or some queen move. Queen moves, I could trade and win f7. It's actually kind of interesting. Just going to a, a rook ending. This seems wrong because I'm still down a pawn. But the thing is, it's hard for black to defend the c-pawn. And my rooks activate really quickly. Um, that's also important I can take and defend, which I think I want to do. There is another idea, though. There's actually a crazy idea in this position to allow takes here. No, I want to take and defend. So I don't give the black black the option of taking. Hmm. That's still really tricky though. Mm. 
Okay, there's kind of a crazy line which I'm trying to to figure out. The tournament has officially ended. Okay, here I start with checking. And then this move. This should be winning for white. Threatening maiden one. Or maiden two, I guess. So black's going to have to resort to being passive. And then it's a typical endgame situation when you control the seventh rank with the rooks, but you're not quite mating. Mm. Let's take Move this way, threatening maiden one. I'll put the rook, the rook back on g7 to defend. And now I win the pawn and everything's safe now. King's cut off, this pawn's defended. Life is good. Thank you, Shane O'Nellis, gifting a sub. Okay, so we'll threaten in this move again. Yeah, sometimes the best way to win a position like this is just patience. And slowly but surely, I'll march the pawns forward. I just want to play h5. King will kind of find shelter between the rooks and pawns. And basically guarding the king along the, the ranks or the, the rank and the file. Or the file in the rank. <laughs> um, so we see the same pattern of... It's kind of like a caterpillar. Like the way a caterpillar moves. Like you, you inch up. Like you expand and then contract. Okay. That was pleasant. A caterpillar endgame technique. Um, there was an interesting moment, which I was trying to figure out. When I took on c7, black has a move rook g2. Engine's just saying draw, um, which I would probably trust. But it, it gets kind of weird because, um, first of all, if I take, then... We just trade rooks, and this should be a drawn ending. But I was calculating a uh, check here, check here, and then this, with the idea that after here, here, and whichever rook checks, I move to f1, and then there's no more check on f2, and I thought I might have chances here to win, but engine just still just says it's a draw, because there's no great way... Like this just trades. Yeah, this would be a draw. Oh, nice to hear. Yeah, thanks to everyone who played the tournament. It is it is uh, officially over. Uh, we'll get some more confetti. If you ever start your own newspaper, you should call it the rows and columns. Oh. <laughs> Wait, is that a pun or is that just a genuine suggestion? The Rosen Columns. Well, thanks for the suggestion, Zan Man. <laughs> uh, and yeah, thanks to the 382 people who competed. Good job to Strong Chess Mood. And Bolti Boltzi 1796 and Intuition Pump. Um, 
oh i finished outside of top top 10 um yeah i had some fun games i'll probably put the whole thing on youtube um nice to have kind of a series of of ponziani games from from both perspectives too from white and black 